Hi folks, welcome to the Cannabis Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Burns. Last week, an international group composed mainly of doctors, scientists, and concerned citizens of the earth released a report talking about how failed the drug war is, not only in the United States, but worldwide. And of course, they came down the hardest on the United States because of the Drug Enforcement Agency and the United States' input all around the world. We basically have started a drug war not only in this country against our citizens, but we started them in, in over 90 different countries around the world. And we fund them, we send our own drug enforcement agencies to these countries, and, and this report pretty much gave them a big fat F for their drug war. And of course, you know, for the last 40 something years since the beginning of the Drug Enforcement Agency in 1970 and also at the time when Nixon was in the Controlled Substance Act, most of the people using cannabis in particular, we knew this drug war was a, 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 a fail, a failure, going to be a failure. It already was a failure. And the fact that, uh, that the government was going to fund hassling citizens of the United States, arresting them for using an herb which pretty much is their own constitutional right to use that herb if they so desire. Uh, we, we knew that, that this drug enforcement agency in the beginnings of it and all, we knew back then that this was going to turn into the biggest fiasco ever and time proved us right. It, it, we, could have, we could have stopped the drug war the first year after it started and you would have had the same comments. This is a failure. It's not doing anything but ruining lives. This is taking innocent citizens off the streets and putting them in prison, ruining their lives, ruining their chances for the future, ruining their families, all of that at a cost that the United States government cannot afford. All of the things that we fund like the Drug Enforcement Agency and Homeland Security, okay, the Drug Enforcement Agency has roughly 12,000 agents. You know, add another 10, 15,000 agents to that and you've got Homeland Security. But their biggest job, yeah, they're along the borders of the United States, mainly the Mexican border and stuff, but their biggest job is to try to stop the flow of marijuana, not the flow of immigrants. And the Drug Enforcement Agency, they are the ones that are the root cause of all the massive deaths that we're finding, not only in Mexico, but we're starting to find mass graves in this country also. Just here yesterday in Texas, they were reporting a house down in Liberty, Texas, which is just north of Houston, and they apparently found a mass grave there of some Spanish people and stuff, and, and this looks like more activity from the cartels. Folks, why do we allow this to happen? Don't, don't you realize that if we did not have this war on drugs, if we did not have this Controlled Substance Act, if, if drugs were legalized, that people could use them in the, in the privacy of their own homes where they're not hurting anyone, there would be no cartels. Just like back in the days of alcohol, if we had never gone to a prohibition and all of that, you never would have given the Al Capone gangs the power and the money they needed to, to really be build into big cro crooked organizations. And that's what we've done here in the United States with the Drug Enforcement Agency and the Controlled Substance Act. We have created the cartels. I would not be surprised that our own government is behind the cartels even more than what we tend to think they are through the Drug Enforcement Agency, in other words, the creators of them. I really do believe that high-ranking government officials help the cartels because they make money. They make lots of money, and they know that if drugs are legal, if the Controlled Substance Act is wiped off the slate of the earth, then guess what? All those profits are gone. All that becomes legal business. All of that means that there are going to be no more cartels, no more crooked organizations pretty much raping and killing and pillaging American citizens. And it's not just the cartels that are doing it. Our own drug enforcement agency, they, you know, we talk about the 50 or 60,000 people that have been murdered in Mexico. What about the, uh, the 120,000 plus that have been sent to prisons here in the United States since the beginning of the drug war that contracted AIDS and died before they got out of prison? What about that? That's more than the Vietnam War. That's more than all the wars except for the Civil War and World War II. How, I mean, why is the Drug Enforcement Agency allowed to do that? Disrupt innocent lives, send people to jail that, that for the most part are good citizens. All they do is they smoke marijuana. They use a cannabis herb, one that's a natural plant. It's derived from a natural plant. 
It's the dried flowers off of a cannabis plant. There's no manufacturing of drugs like pharmacy companies do and, and laboratories that are, that are producing illicit drugs and stuff. None of that happens. We take the dried flowers off of a plant that's grown on the planet Earth and we smoke them. And the effects of them, yes, we do get a little high from it, but most of it is euphoria. We feel good. It helps our brains think clearer, helps our brains think more. It, there, I've never known anybody that smoked a joint and said, boy, I feel really stupid now. Oh, wait a minute. I do remember one person saying that. That was our former drug czar, William Bennett. Yeah, he said that. I just can't see somebody smoking marijuana because it makes you dumb. Well, Bill, where did you get that from? Because all of the sayings, if you go to Jamaica, places like that where cannabis is pretty much, uh, it's not legal, but it's been accepted as being legal there. It's called the weed of wisdom, not the weed of dumbness. Uh, I think that was just something that the drug czar came up with because that's his job to chase after marijuana. Well, anyway, this report that was released last week, and it was a 24-page report, and some of the high-ranking people on this committee that released this report, one of them is our former Secretary of State, George Schultz. Now, Schultz has been active in trying to get drugs legalized for a long time. And the last time that this, it's not the same committee, but the last time this type of activity came about, they released a report saying the same thing about 25 years ago in 1985. And they pretty much said the same thing. The war on drugs is a failure. It does nothing but cost money. It ruins innocent lives. And people have a constitutional right, just like the people that drink alcohol and the people who smoke cigarettes and the people who take prescription drugs, people who want to smoke marijuana, or sniff cocaine, or shoot heroin if they want to, should have the right to do that constitutionally. And all the drug war has done is create these violent cartels in Mexico and these thousands and thousands of street gangs here in America that contribute even more deaths and more violence. I mean, we're, we talk about the 60,000 people that have died south of the border. My God, look at the gang violence in LA alone. Look how many people die there. It's thousands and thousands a year. All what? To see who controls who sells the weed on what block, what street corner. Why do we do that? Why do we put up with that? Why do we put up with a government that goes after its own citizens? We don't want medical marijuana. We don't want medical marijuana regulated. We want people to be able to use marijuana for medicinal purposes, but we don't want to have to go to a doctor to get a prescription for it. That's absolutely ludicrous. Doctors know nothing about herbal medicine, and it's absolutely insane that we even give them a chance now that they finally see that they can make some money out of it and all. It's the only reason they're doing it. It's not necessary. Marijuana has never killed anybody. It's never sent anybody to the hospital. Nobody's ever died from an overdose of it. It's absolutely the most safest therapeutic substance on this planet. We don't need a controlled substance act to control it. It doesn't matter. It's not going to hurt anybody, people that smoke it. There, they're going to get a little high. They're going to have a good time. Their brain's going to be enlightened a little bit. And they're going to think a little bit better than they were before they smoked it and all. Big deal. Is that really a threat? I can think of a whole lot of things in society out there that we need to pump our money into other than chasing after drugs and cannabis and things like that. I mean, honest to God, the, the violence that generates because of prohibition, we didn't learn back in the 20s. And here we have this cartel in Mexico that just kills anybody that gets in their way. And the gangs in, in America do the same thing. And they kill citizens that are going there to procure their drugs, and they shouldn't even have to do that. If they were legal, we could have legitimate shops, legitimate businesses growing cannabis. We could have legitimate nurseries providing the plants to the people who want to grow their own. You don't even have to go buy it if you don't want to. Grow your own. What? Doesn't that seem like that makes a whole lot more sense? Nobody dies when you have it like that. You don't have cartels killing 50 or 60,000 people in five years if you let people produce their own, if you have it legal. You don't have all of this gang and street violence in America that goes on because of the illicit drug activity. None of that would happen. Is that really what we want? Do we really want to have our streets in America pretty much a war zone? And that's what they are. And, and to complicate matters, we have a drug enforcement agency and the law enforcement going in there fighting them, which makes the war even more heightened and even more dangerous for bystanders and innocent citizens. This is absolutely insane and, and totally unnecessary, completely unnecessary. We don't need a drug enforcement agency for anything, absolutely nothing. We need them for absolutely nothing. All they have done is cause death. They cause tremendous 
tax burden on the citizens of the United States and our government here in the United States, the amount of money. We have spent since 1970 over $5 trillion on the stupid drug war. We've, we've lost countless lives. You, you take the 50 or 60,000 that have been murdered in Mexico just in five years. How many you think that's been in 40 years since the cartels got going when the Drug Enforcement Agency formed? It's in the hundreds of thousands. How many people in the United States have been killed from gang activity, turf wars, people trying to take over this street corner versus another street corner? How many people that has killed? That's killed another hundreds of thousands. And we're pumping money into this to have American citizens murdered, basically. And our friends south of the border, the Mexican people, innocent people being mur murdered. Why? Because we have a controlled substance act that makes marijuana illegal. And when you have prohibition and you make a substance illegal, somebody's going to be selling it. And guess what that is? That's the cartels, folks. And that's why they make a lot of money, because it's illegal. The price structure is ridiculous. I mean, even for Mexican marijuana, citizens of the United States today at the minimum are paying $60 an ounce, upwards to $100, $120 an ounce for pretty much bogus marijuana, uh, two, 3% cannabis at the best. And the price should be around $5 an ounce for the best varieties, the 25% Afghani varieties, all those. All those should be around $5 an ounce and would be if we had them legal. And the money is not in the cannabis, not being where the cannabis is being smoked or sold. That's not where the money's at, folks. We're holding up the hemp industry because we're worried about people getting high. Yet we don't mind hundreds of thousands of people dying because of a drug enforcement agency and the stupid Controlled Substance Act that our own government has passed to wage war against our own citizens. We don't care nothing about that. We don't care that three quarters of a million people die a year from cigarettes and alcohol. We don't have a Controlled Substance Act for them. We don't have a drug enforcement agency going after them and arresting people coming out of liquor stores with six packs in their hand or out of Kroger or one of those places. How come that's not happening? Those drugs really do kill a lot of people. You take 750,000 people that die from cigarettes, alcohol, and prescription drugs each year, and then you look at the 17,000 that die from all the illicit drugs, heroin, cocaine, methamphetamine, all those combined don't kill 17,000 people a year. 750,000 though for the legal alcohol and cigarettes, and yet we have a war waged against the people who want to use the drugs that are not harming anybody. What is that all about? Does have we gone brainless in this country? We seem to have been asleep for 40 years. I think the best thing that this country could do is wake up and smoke a joint and abolish this Controlled Substance Act. Every bit of it. You throw it out the door. It's done nothing but cause death, poverty, ruin people's lives. For what? What have we accomplished? We don't even stop 2% of the drugs that come across our borders. 2%. That's like if you send your work crew of 10 people to go down and do a construction job down there, only 2% of the work gets done instead of all of it, but you'd plan on it getting done. Why do we need a drug enforcement agency that's only doing 2% of their job? We don't. We don't need them anyway. And when you look at this committee, this worldwide committee, George Schultz, one of the members, Secretary of State, twice, two different presidents of the United States he served under. Very smart man. Unfortunately, when they said this 25 years ago, the drugs should be legal, we should end this war on drugs and all. What did the Drug Enforcement Agency do about it? They ignored all the petitions. Francis Young, federal judge, looked at the petition and said, look, cannabis should be legal. Ignored it. No, nah, we need more scientific and medical evaluation. Well, we already have the scientific and medical evaluation about cannabis, and none of it's bad. In fact, we are born with cannabinoid receptors in our brain. That just shows, goes to show you we're outfitted to smoke cannabis. I don't think that happened by accident. Folks, wake up. Honestly, wake up. We've got to abolish this drug enforcement agency. And we don't, it's costing this country, if we had that money that we put in this drug war alone and we had pumped it into our economy, the United States would not be in the shape we're in right now. We wouldn't be borrowing 40 cents of every dollar that we're spending just so we can operate. We wouldn't be spending every bit of our GDP and in, 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 in mounting the amount of debt of 14, 15 trillion dollars and having congressmen to have to argue over, can we raise the ceiling a little bit more because guess what? We're gonna spend some more money on chasing drugs and we need a little bit higher debt ceiling. It's ridiculous. In the stupid drug war. It was a bad idea from the beginning. It was a bad idea in the early 30s when they made the, the Marijuana Tax Act. 
We never learn from our past mistakes, folks. This is our government. Our government is taking this country down. And this drug war is one of the biggest reasons because it's not only costing us trillions of dollars, but it's preventing an industry that could be bringing in trillions of dollars and putting people to work. I thank you for joining me.